Pokemon The Guardian's Challenge. Meet Ash and Pikachu. Ash, a Pokemon dreamer who wants to have it all, including becoming a Pokemon master. Pikachu, Ash's first partner Pokemon and long-time companion. Look out for these Pokemon. Tapu Koko, Exeggutor, Poplio, Togedemaru and Rockruff. Chapter 1, Z-Ring. It was morning on Mele Mele Island in the Alola region. In the Pokemon school, the class were practicing their skills with their Pokemon. Then, Professor Cuckoo walked in, leading Ash and Pikachu. Good morning, class, the teacher said. You'll remember Ash. He'll be joining us here at the Pokemon school for a while. Hi, guys, said Ash happily. I'm so glad to be here. The class all called out greetings, except for an older boy called Kiawe, who looked at Ash through narrowed eyes. Is that a Z-ring? A boy called Sophocles asked Ash, pointing to Ash's wristband. Yes, said Kiawe suspiciously. Where did you get that? You didn't take part in the island challenge. He rubbed the matching band around his own wrist. No, Ash admitted. Tapu Koko gave it to me. You saw the guardian Pokemon of Mele Mele Island again? A girl called Mallow asked in disbelief. Ash nodded. Pikachu and I heard Tapu Koko's voice, so we followed it. This band came floating down to us. The others gaped. I've read a lot about Tapu Koko, said a girl called Lily. It's believed that the Guardian protects Mele Mele Islanders, but sometimes plays tricks too. Very rarely, it also gives gifts to people it likes. Ash looked at Kiawe Z-Ring. Hey, does this mean now I can use Z-Moves like you? He asked eagerly. Ash had seen Kiawe use his incredible Z-Moves during a Pokemon battle. Using Z-moves is something that should not be taken lightly, Kiawe snapped. Chapter 2. Pokemon Science Only when a Pokemon and its trainer's hearts are joined will the Z-ring turn their feelings into power, Kiawe said fiercely. But those feelings must be about something more than themselves. Like what? Ash asked. Like doing something for the islands, helping Pokemon or helping other people. Kiawe frowned seriously. I hope you realise what a big responsibility this is. Ash was silent for a minute. Then he gave a nervous smile. Kiawe, I don't understand very much about Z-Rings or their power, but I do know how special they are. You can count on me to treat them with respect. At last, Kiawe's face softened. Good, he replied. OK, class, called Professor Cuckoo. It's time for Pokemon Science. For science class, Mr. Oak was dressed as an executor. Ash tried not to giggle at the sight. Next to the teacher stood a real executor, but it was much bigger than Ash had ever seen before. Many Pokemon look different in the Alola region, Mr. Oak explained. For example, Alolan executor are taller than others. This is because of the Alolan climate, which is sunny all year round. Wow, said Ash, moving closer to get a better look. That's so interesting. It's even got a tail, he said, reaching for the executor. Wait, Ash, Lily called in alarm. There's something you should know about its tail. Ash looked up, but at the same moment, the executor's tail lashed towards him, sending him flying. Chapter 3. A Lola Plate Ash landed with a crash on the other side of the room and lay groaning. Are you OK? Sophocles called. The tail of the Alolan Exeggutor has a mind of its own, Lily said to Ash. You need to approach carefully in case it decides to attack. That's what I was trying to say before. Ash stood up, wincing and dusting himself off before giving a sheepish smile. That evening, Ash was at Professor Cuckoo's house where he was studying while he was on Mele Mele Island. The professor put Ash's dinner down in front of him. That looks delicious! It's called an Alola plate. It's a famous dish from this region. Ash seized his knife and fork and began eating at once, while the professor put another plate in front of Pikachu and his own rock ruff. As Professor Cuckoo sat down next to Ash with his own dinner, Ash dropped his knife and fork and announced, That was amazing. Thank you. You've finished already? The professor asked in disbelief. Just then his phone rang and he walked away from the table. 
Ash sat on the floor, petting Rookruff. Professor Cuckoo here, Ash heard him greeting the caller. Mm-hmm, I see. The professor lowered his voice and turned away. Who was he talking to, and why didn't he want Ash to know? Chapter 4. Toge de Maru The next morning, Ash and Pikachu overslept, so they had to run the whole way to the Pokemon school. Hurry, Pikachu, Ash panted. We might just make it in time. As they sped through the gateway, there was a sudden explosion of noise, and streamers fluttered around their faces. Startled, Ash staggered backwards, tripped, and landed on the ground. A Lola surprise, cried his classmates as they gathered around him. Ash blinked. Did we surprise you? asked Kiawe, putting out a hand to help pull Ash to his feet. You could say that, Ash replied with a grin. We wanted to throw you in a Lola welcome party, Mallow said. And that's just the first surprise. The first? Ash repeated, confused. Yes, said Sophocles. Next, Togedamaru and I want to challenge you. A smile crept across Ash's face. A Pokemon battle? You're on. Sophocles just grinned. Follow me, he said. Sophocles and his Togedamaru led the way further into the school playground to where two large paddling pools full of balloons waited. Balloons? Ash wondered. That's right, Mallow said. Whichever team pops all their balloons first, wins. Ash frowned. This wasn't like any Pokemon battle he'd ever taken part in. But then he smiled. This should be easy, he declared. Ready? Kiawe shouted at them. Go! Chapter 5. Lightning Rod Both teams ran to their pools. Ash and Pokemon each picked up a balloon and tried to pop it with their hands. Oof, Ash said. This is harder than I thought. Finally, his first balloon popped, and he looked up with satisfaction, only to see Sophocles popping balloon after balloon against Toge de Maru's spines. They're fast, Ash said to Pikachu. How are we going to beat them? You can do it, Ash, Mallow called from the sidelines. You're allowed to use Pokemon moves, Lily hinted. Really? Ash asked. All right, Pikachu. Let's pop all the balloons using your thunderbolt move. Pika! Pikachu replied, charging up for thunderbolt. Sophocles smiled. Come on, Togedemaru, he said softly. This is our chance. Choo! Pikachu yelled, releasing thunderbolt. As Ash and Pikachu watched in astonishment, Togedemaru absorbed all the electric energy from Pikachu's attack. Swirling around, it tore through the balloons, popping them in a matter of seconds. Ash stood, rubbing his head. What is that? he asked. Togedemaru's ability is lightning rod, Sophocles replied, grinning. It absorbs lightning bolts with its spines. Then it can release that stored power as a move. Great, huh? That is really cool, Ash had to admit. Togedemaru is amazing. Kiawe laughed. This is no time to be impressed, he said, gesturing towards the pool as Togedemaru popped the last balloon. The winners are Togedemaru and Sophocles, Mallow announced. Chapter 6. Poplio Sophocles swept his Pokemon into the air. You were amazing, he said. Ash smiled, clapping. They had won fair and square. Ash said a soft voice. Ash turned to see Lana and her Poplio standing behind him. Are you ready for your third surprise, she asked shyly. It's a challenge against us. Ash nodded excitedly and followed them both over to the lake. In this race, the Pokemon have to first run and then swim, Mallow explained. Ash and his new friends gathered by the water's edge to cheer Pikachu and Poplio on. Ready, get set, go, Mallow called, and the race began. Pikachu was easily ahead as the two Pokemon raced across land, but once Poplio had dived into the water, it quickly overtook Pikachu. Come on, Poplio, Lana called. You're almost there. With a last burst of speed, Poplio leapt back out of the water and over the finish line. Ash was amazed. Poplio can swim at speeds of 25 miles an hour, Lily said. That's so fast, Ash said, as Pikachu staggered out of the water looking exhausted. Ash wrapped Pikachu in a towel. You did a great job too, Pikachu, he said. Kiawe walked over. Your fourth surprise is competing against me, the older boy said with a challenging smile. Ash grinned. I'm ready. 
For this challenge, Ash and Kiawe raced each other on Tauros, the Will Bull Pokemon. The race was close. Ash and Kiawe were neck and neck, but as they reached the finish line, Kiawe's Tauros pulled ahead. Kiawe wins, Mallow cried. I was so close, Ash complained. You rode well, Kiawe agreed, making Ash smile. Professor Cuckoo approached with Rockruff. Hey, Ash, I'm your fifth surprise. How would you and Pikachu like a Pokemon battle against Rockruff and me? That's the best surprise yet, Ash said to Professor Cuckoo. He loved practicing his skills in a Pokemon battle. But first, it's time for some lunch, Mallow insisted. Ash opened his mouth to protest. How could he think of eating when there was a Pokemon battle to take part in? But just then his tummy gave an almighty rumble. As Ash was filling his plate with a second helping of another delicious Alola meal, he heard a strange cry. He spun round to see Tapu Koko, the Pokemon guardian of Mele Mele Island. Behind him, Ash heard the others gasp. This was the first time they had seen Tapu Koko. Ash smiled. I'm glad to see you again, he said. I wanted to thank you for the Z-ring. But suddenly, Tapu Koko seized the hat from Ash's head and flew off. Chapter 8. Tapu Koko Hey, Ash said, and began to run after the guardian Pokemon, the others following. Tapu Koko came to a stop in a clearing in the forest and faced Ash challengingly. Lily tapped Ash's shoulder. I've read about this, she said. Apparently, long ago, Tapu Koko used to challenge Mele Mele Islanders to battle. Ash's eyes glittered. OK, he said. Let's have a battle. At once, Tapu Koko leapt up into the air, which began to ripple and spark with energy. Ash, Lily called. It's using electric terrain. That makes electric-type Pokemon moves more powerful. That's lucky for us, Ash said, winking at his electric-type Pikachu. Pikachu, use Thunderbolt. Pikachu! His Pokemon roared, sending a thunderbolt towards Tapu Koko. There was a blaze of light, but then Tapu Koko emerged untouched. Tapu Koko's just too powerful, Kiawe breathed. The guardian Pokemon darted towards Ash and he flinched. But then Tapu Koko gently touched the Z-ring around Ash's wrist. You want me to use Z-moves? Ash asked. Tapu Koko just looked at him. All right, Ash said. I don't know how, but I'll try. Behind him, the others watched nervously. Ash pulled his arms together over his head as he had seen Kiawe do before. He closed his eyes and felt his power connect with Pikachu's. Go, Pikachu! he cried. Chapter 9. Z-Moves Ash felt a force unlike anything he had ever experienced as Pikachu's Z-Move burst forward. It sent swirling, crackling energy speeding towards Tapu Koko. The forest shook with the effects of the powerful move, and Ash ducked down. That's a Z-move, Ash said to himself, panting. He looked up to see Tapu Koko emerging from a huge crater. The guardian Pokemon paused and nodded once before flying away. The others ran up to Ash, cheering. That was amazing, said Mallow. You and Pikachu are so strong. What happened to the crystal in your Z-ring? Kiawe asked. Ash looked down. Oh no, he said. The crystal had shattered. That's because you weren't ready to use Z-moves, Kiawe said sternly, because you hadn't taken the island challenge. For a moment, Ash felt downcast. Then he smiled with new determination. All right, I'll take the island challenge and learn how to use Z-moves properly. Will you all help me? Of course, agreed his new friends. Once more, Kiawe was the only one who remained silent. Come on, Kiawe, Lily said gently. Ash needs you. Well, the older boy replied, I suppose I am the only one here who knows how to use Z-moves. The others all cheered and Ash grinned. He had a feeling that his adventures in Alola had only just begun. The End